Welcome back. This is the replacement for the van that got wrecked. You'll notice on my other videos the, the details of it. We were able to save some equipment. We actually saved, uh, were able to salvage the machine. The ProCam Performer, it's going to be fine. And so we're going to pick it up at the end of this week. So we'll see that on later videos. But what we have here is an Isuzu FRR. It's a little bit overwhelming. It is a little bigger than the NPR, which we're replacing. But it is a beast and it is solid. And when I drove it back from Montana, I'd have to say uh, it took some getting used to just because you're higher, but it is solid and I think it'll handle the load quite fine. Well, let's take a look around. Of course, we've got plenty of room inside. We've got this little extra cab here. It's called the sleeper. Now, I don't plan on getting any sleep during the day. First of all, nobody will let me, and of course, people will probably catch me if I tried it. So, well, we got plenty of real estate back there that I have still to decide what I want to do with. But the inside, it is very comfortable, plenty of room, and uh, of course, we got some overhead storage bins for your clipboard and everything else. And of course, it'll handle three people quite nicely. And the rest, of course, the big selling point was this side roll-up door. Uh, the last one we had did not have a side roll-up door, so we had to cut one in. And that was about 2500 bucks and a lot of work, so I was trying to avoid it. So when searching for this van, I uh, just had a parameter of a 14-foot box side roll-up door, and two of these came up, one in LA and one in Montana, and I chose this one. Uh, the modifications we're going to make, you'll notice it has a lift gate. Now, if this was a lift gate that tucked underneath the box, I think I'd probably hang on to it. But as you can see, it's definitely in the way. So one plan is uh, we're going to go ahead and remove it and sell it. Let's take a look inside. The nice thing about the inside box is it is all aluminum. This will handle the chemicals, handle the water, if I have a water leak, and of course we usually do every once in a while. And uh, we have a corrosion resistance, of course, with the aluminum. This door is located what's called at the second position. First position is right here. The one thing I am starting to become familiar with is the e-track system. I'm noticing this has a four rail system and already installed and instead of removing it I think I'm gonna make use of it. What we have here is shelf is some shelves. So you just simply drop a 2x4 screw it in and that'll go all the way across. So the plan is to put the performer from the other machine have it bolted right here in the corner just enough from the wall to be able to get access to that one side so we can work on it. And of course, above it is a lot of wasted space, so I think I'm going to make use of that E-Track system and create a shelf going all the way across so I can store blowers and other equipment uh, as I need it. So I think that'll be very handy to have. Aside from those shelf brackets that cost $8 a piece, this is something I think I'll buy more of. These are $4 a piece. I got these at the local Harbor Freight, but these are just hanger hooks. Just simply place in and place back on. I'm probably going to put a rope, a fix a rope or a web strap so you can just hang. You can hang hoses and other things onto those. Or if there's something I need to weld on there, I just simply weld on and that'll become an e-track system as well. But I think I'm beginning to like this e-track system. So that's it. That is build number one. By all means, leave your comments and subscribe. And we're going to keep a step-by-step -step log on how this whole thing gets built. So definitely stay tuned and I look forward to talking with you on the next one.